This screencast is on the foreign exchange market and how it connects with the loanable funds and the money market graphs. When we're talking about the foreign exchange market, we're looking at the exchange rate of two countries and their currencies, how they are relative to one another. Um, just to remind ourselves about the labeling, on the horizontal axis is the quantity of the U.S. dollars. And for the exchange rate, remember that whatever is on your horizontal axis goes as the denominator in the exchange rate. So the price of yen per U.S. dollar. And yen is the currency for Japan. And so for their exchange rate, since the quantity of yen is on the horizontal axis, the exchange rate is the price of U.S. dollars per yen. Um, I have put here in the supply, the D is for the dollar, the demand is a subscript of a D, and the Y is um, relative to the yen. You can use a lowercase e for the exchange rate and a q for the quantity. In this situation here, it's saying that Japan buys U.S. goods. So when we think about what that means when Japan buys U.S. goods, that means that the U.S. is going to be exporting their goods in, over to Japan. And in order for Japan to be able to buy the U.S. exports, they need to use the U.S. currency. You cannot buy U.S. goods with the yen. Instead, you have to convert the yen over to the dollar. And so with that, Japan will increase their demand for the U.S. dollar so that they can buy the exported goods. And Japan will then need to supply their yen in order to be able to demand the dollar. When we look at what this looks like on a graph, you can see here that you have an increase in the demand, which is increasing the exchange rate. And over here, you have an increase in the supply of yen, which is decreasing the exchange rate. Um, what this means, again, is that the U.S. here has an increase in the exchange rate, and so they have a stronger dollar. Um, or you could say that the U.S. dollar appreciates, and that just means that it takes less U.S. dollars to buy the yen, or you could say it takes more yen to buy a U.S. dollar. Because the exchange rate has gone down in the yen market, we see here that the yen depreciates. These words are really important to use in FRQs. Instead of just saying the exchange rate rises, you should say that it appreciates. So when there's an increase in the demand for the U.S. dollar because of those exports, that means that there's more currency that's floating around in the U.S. And what does that mean with the graphs of the money market and the loanable funds when there is more currency? So first we take a look at the money market graph, and this is just the money supply. So if you've got more currency floating around, you have an increase in the money supply. And when you have an increase in the money supply, we then go to our train here where you have a decrease in the nominal interest rate, you have an increase in consumption, and you also have an increase in the non-interest-bearing um, investment, which increases the aggregate demand and then will cause an increase in real GDP in the price level. Whenever there's a change in the money market, that means then that there's also going to be a change in the loanable funds market. An increase in the money supply leads to an increase in the supply of loanable funds. And so when we look at the real interest rate and the impact that this has, because of the increase in the money supply, there's an increase in the supply of loanable funds, which causes a decrease in the real interest rate, which again, remember, is labeled with the R, which increases investment spending and also the interest-bearing consumption spending, um, which would be like mortgages, which falls under the investment, which is an increase in aggregate demand and leads to an increase in real GDP and price level. So let's take a look at another example. In this one here, you have the real interest rate is lower in the U.S. relative to Japan. So when we think about the real interest rate, we should be thinking about the loanable funds market and the financial assets that people can invest their savings in. And so when we think about this real interest rate is lower in the U.S., what happens in the foreign exchange market 
Well, people in the U.S. are going to want to move over into the financial assets of the yen because their real interest rate is higher. And so in order to be able to invest in the financial assets in Japan, you have to supply the dollars, the U.S. dollars, in order to demand the yen. Well, we know that then a decrease in the exchange rate means that the U.S. dollar depreciates, where and then the yen will appreciate. When one depreciates, the other has to appreciate. I want to focus on what it means now to depreciate, because it's not always a bad thing. Like people would think, well, we have a weaker dollar, and that means then it takes more of our U.S. dollars to buy uh, the yen. But there's also something to think about that when the U.S. dollar depreciates, that means then that the yen, it takes less yen to convert over to the dollar. And so what that means then is that goods in the U.S. are cheaper relative to goods in Japan. And if goods are cheaper in the U.S., well, what happens? If our price level then is lower because things are cheaper because of the depreciation of the dollar, that means then that people from Japan are going to want to buy the U.S. goods. This will increase our net exports, and as we know, that is one of the components of AD, so it will increase our aggregate demand and lead to an increase in real GDP in the price level. So when we think about what happens with the uh, money market and the loanable funds market, we must assume that money from the net exports goes into the loanable funds market. And so when we look at the graphs, more currency is floating around now in the U.S. because Japan is converting their currency to the U.S. dollars to buy our net exports. So we have an increase in the money supply. And as we know, an increase in the money supply decreases the nominal interest rate, which increases consumption and non-interest bearing investment, which increases AD and also our real GDP and price level. And if there's an increase in the money supply, that means there's an increase in the loanable funds market. And just to reiterate, that will decrease the real interest rate, which leads to an increase in investment and AD, and then that will turn into an increase in real GDP and price level. So when the U.S. dollar depreciates, it's not necessarily a bad thing because it allows for an increase in the net exports.